Hello ladies and gentlemen, and my name is Andrew. I'm a medical instructor with Campaign Pay It Forward. Today I'm going to talk to you about the two differences between American Heart Association and the American Red Cross. I highly recommend um, that even though I'm telling you about the American Red Cross and the American Heart Association, that you go out and you do your own research. Uh, whenever I do research on um, a company that I want to use or an organization that I want to use, I research three different um, information avenues and then I go ahead and make the decision. That's why I'm in part making this video to provide you information uh, free of charge. Um, all I ask is that you hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much. So American Red Cross offers a wide variety of programs. First aid CPR AED for adult and pediatric, lifeguarding, babysitting, PALS, ALS, a lot of swim programs. So with the American Red Cross, I highly recommend their program. They have a very good SEO for search engine optimization. So people are driven to their site. And it is not um, as cluttered as American Heart Association. With American Red Cross, in order to actually um, become an instructor, you need the basic level certification, first aid CPR AED. And then you can take an instructor level class, which is usually about six hours, then plus two hours online class, which we do offer. Once you become an instructor for the American Red Cross, uh, then you can join a licensed training provider agreement form. You can go ahead and send that to support at redcross.org or you can somehow get affiliated with organizations and stuff like that. So if you don't have an EIN number, um, if you don't um, have an actual business and you're doing it for a church, then you do it underneath the church or a school or maybe uh, the fire department that you're at. I don't believe that there is a fire department that takes American uh, Red Cross. Most of the time that is American Heart Association, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. So once you have the license training provider agreement and you've submitted it to the Red Cross, which makes sure that you have an EIN number, sometimes they do ask for um, a business plan if you're starting a new business, um, make sure that you have a general liability of $1 million or more. And some of the other um, nuances in terms of the classes that you wanna teach, how many numbers, um, if you have training facilities, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that you're just an actual and viable business. Then you have the authorized provider agreement. The authorized provider agreement is an uh, instructor um, business in the American Red Cross signing a form and document saying that you are able to instruct uh, the American Red Cross certifications and then um, that you're also willing to follow their protocols and your company's protocols too. So uh, an authorized provider agreement form is just that individual instructor. You can have multiple authorized provider agreement forms with multiple agencies. So for instance, I have uh, one with the Boy Scouts, I have one with um, the federal uh, government that I work with, and then I have one with Campaign Pay It Forward. And I have, uh, actually, I have too many, to be honest. Um, so once you have the authorized provider agreement, then you can go ahead and instruct. If you do not have an authorized provider agreement form and you go ahead and instruct a class, uh, your name will not pop up uh, when they try to enter in the course roster on uh, the Red Cross Learning Center. Several avenues to advertise. Uh, the lifeguarding pro um, program is uh, pretty good. Um, it outpaces most of the other programs out there. Um, it is pretty expensive for the certification cards. I believe that they go for $42 uh, for 2022. Um, but if you get affiliated or if you negotiate prices and stuff like that, the cost may be lower or lower. And if you want to affiliate with us, we have offer a wide variety of benefits. Um, go ahead and leave us a message or send us an email and we'll be happy to send out that information to you. So uh, you can advertise on the Red Cross website um, with Red Cross class postings. Uh, with that, it, it does cost quite a bit, $50 per class that you post up. Depending on your area, um, Red Cross is more um, predominant versus American Heart Association. Um, so I know for the New York area, um, they're slowly getting to uh, the American Red Cross, but it hasn't fully taken foothold in that area yet. American Red Cross does have a phenomenal feedback. Um, if you email a Red Cross rep, they usually will get back to you um, pretty quickly. Uh, the Red Cross um, so with the Red Cross Learning Center, once you get the instructor portal, um, it allows you to download all the pamphlets, uh, the tests, it, it shows you videos, you're able to enter in course rosters, 
you're able to set up blended learning, uh, which is a hybrid between like online stuff and then you, they come in uh, for about two hours and then they do the skill set for the classes that you offer. So the American Heart Association is usually the pioneer in terms of um, the medical certifications and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the health agencies, um, health care centers, um, fire departments, EMS services use the American Heart Association. It's phenomenal work in terms of advocating uh, for people learning CPR. So with the American Heart Association, you do have to take the initial class. Um, it can be basic life support um, or first aid CPR AED. And then you go ahead and then you can uh, take the instructor course. Uh, the instructor course, once again, is online um, and then it's also in person. And that usually takes about six hours. One thing with the American Heart Association that I want to say is if you don't know which organization to choose, um, choose the American Heart Association first because with the American Heart Association, once you have that uh, instructor certification, you can actually bridge over to the American Red Cross and you can do that for free. If a company tries to charge you, it's probably for the admin fee, um, but it should be no more than $50. And that's to give you the paperwork, make sure um, that everything is transferred over um, and they have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, question session with you. If they don't offer that, then you can just transfer over on your own time for free. Uh, we offer a step-by-step -step process and then we allow people to ask us questions and then we literally hold their hand and then walk them through the whole thing. And that's why uh, sometimes we do charge for that services. Unless they're an affiliate with our um, company, then we actually offer that for free. So with the American Heart Association, um, it's a little bit more complex because you can't just uh, become a licensed training provider agreement. Um, you need to go underneath a training site and then those training sites are under training centers. So we are a training site um, and then we are under a phenomenal training center, highly recommended. I usually do not advertise uh, different uh, programs out there, uh, but if you do legitimately want to know what, who our training center is, um, then you can send us an email or comment on the, uh, on the uh, YouTube below. So the training site um, is, can work two ways. It can uh, allow instructors to issue out cards um, or the training site can um, issue out the cards on behalf of the instructor and that is what we usually do. So the certification costs are substantially lower. Um, the one thing is though they charge uh, for the book and then they charge for the certification fee. So for instance uh, basic life support cards. Uh, we sell them uh, for about five bucks depending on um, what agency or what organization um, you work with. Um, buy the book, uh, which uh, we use WorldPoint to buy the book, so the prices vary a little bit differently because we buy them in bulk, um, but I believe they're going for about $11, maybe even more. Um, so the initial uh, $5 might seem low, but then you have to buy the book, which is required by the American Heart Association when you teach a class. So once you align with a training site, um, if you are interested in aligning with us, um, then you can send us an email. We'll be happy to help you and give you our prices. When you're aligning with a training site, please, please, please be careful. Um, a lot of training sites, uh, sometimes they um, have fees associated with it. So uh, an initiation fee of $100, or sometimes they charge a yearly fee of $100. Um, sometimes they have a back out. Um, so if you try to switch to a different training site, they have um, a charge for that, sometimes $150 to $200. Uh, we don't charge any of that. Uh, we don't charge any roster fees. It's just primarily for the certification. Um, it's in our name, Campaign Pay It Forward. Uh, we're really trying to push out um, instructors and people um, who are willing to certify other people in uh, good uh, quality. Uh, we're not really worried about quantity. We are worried about quality. And we do monitor instructors a little bit more than other agencies. And that's because, as I said before, we, we, we do care about the quality, not the quantity of people. I just wanted to recap with the training site. Uh, if they're charging more fees than above the certification fees, I usually do not recommend it. There is a caveat though um, that I would recommend. And for instance, uh, there's an organization out there, they are pretty good. Uh, we do have them as a secondary provider and um, they do charge a yearly fee of $100, but we use that because they offer a tremendous amount of benefits. Um, they have their own network of instructors that we can actually uh, talk with on um, a forum. They do provide us leads, which is phenomenal. A lot of organizations don't do that. Um, 
And then uh, they, we do have meetings with them every quarter um, and the actual business owner talks with us, uh, training site business owner talks with us, or training center side, talks with uh, all the training sites that they have and uh, they provide good feedback. So initially when we were starting up, uh, they literally walked us through the process on how to find leads, um, on how to find people, on how to, have na how to navigate through the American Heart Association instructor um, portal and stuff like that. Uh, so they were phenomenal. That hundred dollars, I wouldn't say that they should charge more, but <laughs> uh, it, it was well worth it. Um, so there are times where um, if they do charge a yearly fee, um, if you're getting quite a bit back from it, um, then definitely go ahead and, and choose that organization. Um, but if they're just charging the hundred dollars for the heck of it, they're not providing anything back in return. Um, definitely um, do not sign that piece of paper. If you do sign the piece of paper and they do charge an exit fee and stuff like that, uh, the American Heart Association will back up that uh, company. If they won't back up the instructor, they will back up that company. Because you did sign a legal document um, and you did hopefully read the stipulations. Uh, so um, that's one bad thing about it. But once you leave the organization, then you can choose another uh, training site that's hopefully better. You can choose two different training um, sites uh, or training centers. Um, so you can choose a primary one and a secondary one. Uh, we had chosen initially our primary one, uh, which was pretty good. I met him um, actually at a life saving summit and um, but yeah, never had any complaints, never looked back. Um, and then um, in order to offer advanced training like ACLS and PALS, we did choose a secondary provider. And the secondary provider, as I said, is, is, is phenomenal. Um, we really lucked out. Um, I, I've heard some of the horror stories um, and uh, people should not be taking advantage uh, of companies, of beginner businesses and stuff like that. Um, and uh, to be honest, it does break my heart. Um, some of the stories that I've heard and, and the honest training sites and the tra honest training centers, we actually legitimately try to help those um, companies out because uh, most of us initially started this company to uh, provide back to the community, um, to pro provide an avenue for people to learn CPR, AED, to make an impact in the community. Um, and we're not out there to nickel and dime people. And Heart Association um, has the iConnect where you can post up classes and stuff like that. It is not as filtered, uh, and it's for free, but it is not as filtered as the American Red Cross. And because of that, a lot of people, they inundate that system with a wide variety of classes, classes that they don't even teach. And now, in 2022, just in case you're looking at this in 100 years, um, uh, it's, I would almost say it's useless. You get a little bit of um, business that way, but it's not as much business as you would have if there was oversight. American Heart Association, unfortunately, does not have the oversight that the American Red Cross does. Um, and then their feedback is also not as good um, as it used to be. Um, the American Heart Association says that they do have a system coming, um, hopefully within six months. So maybe uh, they might start uh, charging people to post, um, which I hope that they do actually, uh, a small fee, maybe $10, $15 per post to uh, weed out all the people that just keep inundating that system. Um, we'll post up one class um, five days from now, um, but they will have to, whoever's searching for our class has to weed out five different pages of um, spam classes basically in order to get to our class. Um, so it's, it's basically, yeah, basically the eye connects has become useless. So I thought I'd try something new. Um, for those of you who stuck to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe, um, but also to put out a story, um, stories of my personal um, experiences in the EMS field and stuff like that. Um, so there was a lady who had tripped um, over a trail. She um, had bo used both her hands and she had um, I think um, sprains, they said it may have been fractured and stuff like that when she was trying to stop herself from falling with both hands. So I was going through the, uh, the sample and for those of you who know, know uh, samples, signs and symptoms, allergies, uh, medication, um, past history, last ins or outs, um, and then events leading up to the incident, um, I, was, I was going through them. And something just seemed off uh, because uh, when we were doing the initial head to toe assessment and we were using a light pen, um, one of the pupils didn't dilate. And of course, you know, I'm freaking out. We're literally calling for boats in the water because it was near the boat. We were calling for a helicopter. We were worried that she was tanking. Um, we asked her constantly about medications and she says, no, I'm not on medications, you know, and stuff like that, uh, which was pretty surprising since she was a 60 year old. Some 
40 year olds are like walking pharmacies now. Um, and so um, something in my gut says, ask her those questions again, ask the sample questions again. And so I'm going down and I'm asking the signs and symptoms and asking, um, uh, you know, past medical history and stuff like that. And then the second time that I did that, she sort of cocks her head and then she looks at me and then she says, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a fake eye. And of course, you know, I've been in EMS for a wide variety of years. And, you know, sometimes, well, most of the time we could tell if it's a fake eye. I mean, it's a glassy eye, you know, very evident and stuff like that. But the technology that's coming out there fooled me, fooled me 100%. And when she said that, I shouldn't have been as pissed as I was at her. Um, you know, she had legitimately forgot it. A lot of people with dentures and stuff like that, they forget, uh, you know, that they have existing conditions and stuff because they're used to it. They, they deal with it every single day. And, uh, but that's just a story that uh, I found very, very funny and humorous. Um, and hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, or you have, uh, when you're doing the pupil dilations and stuff like that, uh, if one pupil is not dilating, ask them, you know, if they have a fake eye.